Hey dear viewers, welcome to this video presentation today. The other time we looked at mandatory death penalty, focusing our attention majorly on retributive criminal justice system in the Republic of Kenya. Today our focus is going directly to speak to the understanding of restorative justice system. Retributive justice system is the oldest of all, whereas restorative justice is the newest form of criminal justice that at the global level is gaining increasing momentum since 1970s. Having this in mind, it is a question of interrogating our criminal system in the Republic of Kenya, but also interrogating the sentiment shared by different communities when it comes to societal response to crimes and how such crimes should be brought to justice by the community. This is where we are. Well, I said in the other video that crimes or criminal justice involves the community whether the community in terms of families clans or small communities it is still the concept of the communal participation when it comes to crimes criminalizing certain actions such as murder or killing of an individual or a human being has been a practice from time immemorial by different communities and human societies in different parts of the world. Be it as it may, some members of certain communities are still practicing such restorative systems and uh, ideals by perhaps responding to crimes without making reference to the state judicial system in which the power of prosecuting crimes is not with the state but with the communities. But when we talk of acephalous societies, it takes us back to the societies that were simple or the primordial societies of hunters and gatherers. Such societies were known to not be having a lot of criminal cases as the societies of producers. Let's look at the following important publications restorative justice in context by elmer g m white white camp and the book written by margaret zernon on the restorative justice ideals and realities the two books give us very concise understanding of restorative justice and I invite every one of you to get a copy. It is also very necessary to get to the truth and the bottom line of the restorative justice as restorative practices that are founded within various communities and various societies. We are referring to the societies that have evolved and societies that still stick to their traditional beliefs and practices, the so-called indigenous communities that also enjoy their rights within the law. Having this in mind, it reminds us of the following, the definition of the restorative justice that would inform our legal knowledge. Let's look at the following as uh, 
components of restorative justice, such things like reparation, redress, compensation, um, at atonement, uh, indemnification, as well as the correctiveness and we get it also in the correctional justice system and it brings us also to the concept of restitution. Having all these concepts put together in a broader concept of the restorative justice, its ideals and realities, we can group them under the four following categories. Category number one is the blood revenge. Category number two is retribution. Category number three is ritual satisfaction. And category number four is restitution. With the four categories, I can walk you through each one as brief as possible. Blood revenge is applied mostly and in many cases to crimes related to murder. And communities from time immemorial are not comfortable with murder and it is still the case today. Purporting that an individual has committed murder within a community to which he belongs, the questions of exile of that person would be applicable simply because that person may not, to some degree, be accepted by the community. Such traditional communities were known not to have mandatory death penalty. However, there was revenge. Revenge means seeking to pay the crime with another crime. And this is supposed to be directed to the offender. But in some or by some extent, it is sometimes directed to the community or the family or the clan to which the offender belongs. This brings revenge, known as blood revenge, as vendetta or blood void, to a bloodbath in which there would be crimes upon crimes. That means killings that may be endless. This has been witnessed in some circumstances of genocide, some circumstances of civil wars, some circumstances in which such revenge becomes a frequent practice and individuals as communities gang up to ravage other or vandalize other communities or their property in form of revenge. Such revenge has been discouraged as a practice by the state laws and by the international law. However, still, be as it is, the practice is still ongoing, especially among some, pra some pastoralist communities in some areas, even in the Republic of Kenya today. It brings raiding of cattle. It brings also maybe killing of women and children and killing that may be indiscriminate. The category number two is retributive. Retribution is almost similar to the concept of the blood revenge, but blood revenge is applied also in the cases of murder. But retribution goes beyond just the murder cases. It reaches out to capital offenses such as theft, such as forgery and maybe theft with violence. But retribution means crime with punishment. So a certain crime must fit 
a certain punishment. And in that case, the society or the community before our prosecution decides on what punishment to give to what type of crime. By doing so, there is retribution whose scope is also to deter members of a certain community from such practices that are considered criminal by the community. Another category, number three, we talked about ritual satisfaction. Ritual satisfaction is a practice in many traditional societies across Africa in which the use of elders or council of elders or some kind of traditional leadership would be relied on as an atonement to certain crimes. For instance, the crime of murder. When an individual murders another individual, that may attract some ritual satisfaction in which certain practices such as slaughtering an animal and uh, carrying out certain performances would tally with the religious belief of such community and its members that the offender is cleansed and can be accepted back to the community without victimization. Concept of restitution is returning the crime with crime of the offender. So if the offender commits the crime, there must be an a proportional return of the crime committed. In that case, when it is murder, for instance, it must be returned with another murder, which may not necessarily require the system to murder or, or sentence the offender to death penalty, but it may also involve such kinds of revenge by killing other innocent individuals belonging to the community of the offender. There is a lot of injustices on in all this, but there's also a lot of justices in all this. This is where we find concentrate or focus on what is the restoration. What are we restoring? Restoration means simply to bring the social order back to its normalcy concerning ourselves with relationships among members of the community and members among communities and bringing such social order that will see the individuals being reconciled. But looking at the same material case before our prosecution, that is the restorative justice from the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya, I would like to begin by admitting the access to justice under Article 48 and taking it together with the judicial authority or the powers of the judiciary that is provided for under Article 159 of the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya. The power of the judiciary is drawn from the people and it is exercised by the courts and the tribunals through the court officers, judges and magistrates. But there are some clear guiding principles. Number two, the principles include the question of justice must be done. Justice must be seen to be done and it must be done without any corruption or bribe. Justice must be done expeditiously. Another critical principle is about the alternative dispute resolution system. The alternative justice system involves the reconciliation, arbitration, mediation, and as well as traditional dispute resolution mechanisms. These are mechanisms that, according to some Article 3, must be consistent with the Constitution, 
must be consistent with the written law, that is the statutory law or the common law, and must also not be repugnant to justice and morality. In this case, we see the holistic picture of the restorative justice within the Constitution of Kenya, and in the judicial practice already there is possibility of the judicial mediations or the judicial appointment of the mediations. And in that case, some accredited individuals are given that authority by the judiciary to perform mediation in certain matters that are materially within the interest of the communities. Bye for today. Remember that legal information is public knowledge and this is presented to you for free. You only need to subscribe, engage and seek more notification whenever we have similar video lecture. Thank you for watching. Peter here, University of Nairobi School of Law, Kisum Campus.